Hey guys, it's Drac, and the last playtesting video was such a success that I'm going to be making another one. Sitting here with my buddy Pat, I've got life totals over here. Obviously, the fangs are Drac. Pat is Pat. Pat will be playing, and obviously, during a regular tournament, I never do that, but I want to give you a flavor for the video. It looks like... I'm honestly not entirely sure what this is. It looks like some sort of black, white, green red four color mid-range deck which is just a pile of good cards it's a very strange deck it's definitely non-conformist i'm obviously playing in my control deck box which is my favorite niv mizzet deck box i'm playing my same esper list as last time it may be about time to change decks but i really like this list i'm excited and i'm really good at piloting it and that's what's important is that you play a deck that interests you and that is fun to pilot and has lots of lines of play and just keeps you coming back for more and I feel like that's what Esper does for me. I'm about ready to change over to a different kind of control shell and I'll kind of like let you guys weigh in on that in the comments but I'm thinking about going into an America style control shell. I'm looking forward to that. So Pat and I will be playing a full match. Two matches if one of us just creams the other and less if the or and more if we go to three games and so we will uh, roll your dice buddy. So, I've rolled a 9, which is greater than 5. I will take the play. So, this is looking good so far. And that's not so awesome, but I think we'll keep it and hope we draw out of it. Again, we only have two of these, but we can kind of hope that we luck our way into what we need. Uh, mine's fine. All right, sounds good. I'll lead with a watery grave. Sure. Uh, I will go to 18 by playing my Hallowed Fountain, and I'll pass. Sure. Uh, I'm going to play a Rootbound Craig, cast a Farsi. Sure. Right. You're going to ramp out in front of me. Yeah, I'm going to get a... Hmm, that's a good question. What do I want? Uh, okay, I know what I want. I'm going to get... So we're probably going to do this. The argument can be made that this is a more consistent way to hit our land drops because it gives us a higher probability. But this lets us look at three cards and keep one. And this lets us draw effectively two because we're going to draw and then draw again for our turn. And again, we're still trying to dig our way out of it. And then once we get there, we can use this to kind of ease our way into our, uh, our high land density that we really want to get to. So I'll cut your deck. I'm going to think once at the end of your turn. So we will think once, draw a card. Sometimes you just get lucky. All right, and we'll draw for a turn. We'll lay this Godless Shrine. Untapped, actually. So we'll go to 16. Sure. We're playing a dangerous game against your mid-range deck. And we will uh, pass the turn there. Playing this untapped is important because it opens up the ability to do this to dig further, and it opens up the ability to do this if we get scared, and it lets us do some degenerate things with these later on. Alright, so we actually don't care about our life total against you, so we're going to play this untapped and go to 18. My li or your life total is reasonably irrelevant, so sure. Uh, we're going to cast an Arbor Elf. Absolutely. And then we're going to cast a Loxavon Smiter. Also pretty good. So I feel like the most important thing to do here is alchemy for a land. So we're going to alchemy. Sure. End of your turn. Look at the top four. Um, putting this into the graveyard is just gravy. So that's sweet. And this opens up the most colors for us that we need and comes into play on tap. So that's absolutely fine. We're going to take that card and we're going to pitch a revelation, an island, and a think twice, which is why I'm sure. giggling about value. And we'll draw for our turn. So that Loxodon Smiter is actually quite the clock for us, and it's a little bit of a problem. So we'll lay an Isolated Chapel, and we're going to kind of sit back on this card to deal with that issue, and then we'll hope that this does something for us in the ways of dealing with that. So if that's kind of our plan, 
I feel like we want to deal with it instantly, and if we're going to deal with it instantly, we might as well deal with it in the way that's most effective. So the best way to do that is to represent these colors over here. Go ahead and ultimate pressure Arbor Elf. Sure. And then we'll pass. Something that we're interested in later. Uh, we're gonna move to our text. Uh, do you have any white sources? You have I two. I have two. Okay. So I'm gonna lock it on the spider. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have nuked it before he untapped. That might have been a misplay, but I feel like baiting out the resto isn't the end of the world because we just run so many board sweeps in our deck. So we're going to go ahead and attempt to victim of night your lock zone. Sure, spider. that's fine. Second main, cast a Huntmaster. So you're back at 20. Yes, and I have a wolf token, and we will pass to you. Sure. So now playing a draw go is a little scary for us, because the Huntmaster represents the ability to, uh, to flip, which is kind of a problem, especially since it's multicolored. So we're playing this and I'm trying to decide if we want to main phase this, play this tapped or untapped, and see if we want to do something to generate in this area. And it's just like a really tricky choice. I feel like the best thing that we can possibly do is play this untapped, take the damage, hold up the ability to think twice at the end of the turn, and use this to deal with the Huntmaster now, and just kind of like take it from the wolf. So we're going to dim your charm your Huntmaster, sure. and I'm going to play a Watery Grave untapped, go to sure. 14. And I'll pass. Ooh. Mm, not amazing, not terrible. Um, we're going to move to our tech step. Sure. Uh, swing for two. I ended a claim blocks. Sure. I'm at 12. Uh, second main. Cast and Arbor Elf. Alright. And cast a Sinker Healer. Um. So at this point, I feel like this is not the proper answer to this scenario. The best thing to do is dig for a board sweep. Our opponent has missed a land drop, and we don't want to let him get his Arbor Elf for too terribly long. But we've already let it resolve. We have answers for it next turn, so we're going to allow this to resolve. Sure, I'll go to 23. You go to 23. I'm going to flashback, think twice. Okay. Or okay. think twice. Well, after that, I'm done. So. I know. Draw. That's okay, but it's not what we're looking for. We'll untap and draw for our turn. And we're not really getting where we want to be, which is kind of sad. So I think that the best thing to do is, again, before that uh, Arbor Elf untaps and let him start swag tusking, we're going to play a Snapcaster Mage. And with that Snapcaster Mage, we're going to ultimate price sure. targeting your Arbor Elf. Okay. And we will uh, pass the turn on that. So we're leaving up all three of our colors, mm. and next turn we have the ability to do this into something else into something else, which is kind of like a cute trick that this deck has. Um, a tech step. Sure. Swing four or five. I will declare no blocks. Uh, well. I will take five. Sure. I'm at seven. Um, then we're going to cast a Lock on Spider. Sure. Pass to you. So we really want to hit a board sweep. That's also not bad, but it's not what we want to be doing this turn. So, now we have a way to start digging our way out of it. I feel like we're going to pass the turn and keep hoping that you don't draw into a land. Uh, we're going to move to our tech step. Alright, I'm going to rearrange my mana. I'm going to Restoration Angel targeting Snapcaster Mage. Um, that is fine. Okay, I'm going to target Victim of Night with Snapcaster Mage. It has flashback. Also fine. Go to combat. Uh, combat. Smell that. I'm going to block here and block here. Sure. Victim of Night here. Sure. Uh, they will trade. Victim of Night resolves to exile. S Resto lives. Second main. Sure. Uh, I'm going to cast Ranger's Path. So you've got a way to dig out of your mana screw now, which is kind of stinky. Sure, go. Uh, I'm going to get 
a overgrown and a temple garden, and we're going to pass to you. So Pat now has the ability to cast pretty much whatever he wants, and I don't feel like we're going to kill him with damage, so it's a really good thing that we have this because it's our main way of winning, and we have yet to hit one of our utility lands for that strategy, which is a little scary. Um, this is a particularly good draw for us because it lets us sit back on these for this, which is exactly what we want to do. So we're going to go to combat, swing for three, I'll go to 20. put you at 20, uh, play Jace, sure. grab one of your dice, and put Jace at four, and mill you for 10. Uh, do you want to go first? Sure. Sun pedal, thread tusk, thread tusk, sun pedal, sun pedal, wolf run, and assemble. Sure. So one of the most important things that this deck does is figures out on the play by milling your opponent what exactly they're playing, and it does that by milling them. So like now we know with reason what we're playing against. I'm done. <sighs> that's not amazing, but that's what we got, so we're going to cast it. Uh, cast, right toast. Say no, sure. which is the most powerful thing our deck does. Uh, it's your go. Alright, so we draw for our turn. It's a pretty good one. We're going to mill you for ten again. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Sure. The Embarrator Rights is a little bit unexpected and a little bit frightening for our deck, but it's not the end of the world. So we're going to pass the turn. Sure. Uh, this is not a terrible draw. All right, let's see. What do we have in here? Uh, okay, so I think the best thing that we have in Arabia right now is Aurelia. So we want... To flashback, Umbrella Rights targeting Aurelia. In response, I'm going to. We have two abilities. We can dig for an answer next turn, which I feel like we already have, or we can dig for an immediate answer with Think Twice, and we definitely want to do the Think Twice. Sure. So we're going to draw off Think Twice. And that's really disappointing. Sometimes this happens, and we were doing it in response in the hopes of hitting Counter Magic, but it didn't happen. So now we have this card, and it doesn't do a lot for us right now, so we have to draw it before Aurelia resolves, and sometimes that's just the way that this deck works, and that's fine. So your spell will resolve. Okay. Uh, I had to pay three for Think sure. Twice, that's my uh, bad. I have nothing left with Flashback I can cast. Uh, okay, so I think we want to do this now. He didn't counter our spell. Which means it's probably pretty safe to do this. Um, we're gonna dreadboard the Jace. Wow, that's a pretty dangerous proposition. Jace is dead. Sure. Um, and after that, we are going to pass to you. That's really disappointing. We kind of went all in on the Jace to win in that fashion. And with Aurelia on the board now, we're in a little bit of trouble. As much as I would like to uh, forbid Alchemy this turn to get some value, I feel like this is our best play. At this point, just to remove the immediate threat. But it's not a high value play. And as an Esper player, I like getting two for ones a lot. Since we've already nomboed ourselves by milling away an Umbarrier Rights and an Umbarrier Rights target, I think the best thing that we can do is pass. Sure. Okay. Ooh, that was a really good draw. Um, it's exactly what we wanted to see. That's pretty terrifying. So we're going to move to our attack step. Sure. Uh, we're going to declare Aurelia as an attacker. Okay. I'm going to block with Resto. Okay. In response to declaring Restoration Angel as a blocker. We're going to tragic slip it. Okay. Um, so it's a 2-3. It is. Damage resolves, it will die. Yes. Okay. 
unless you have a response. Um, no, it'll die. Okay. Uh, I'll move to my second attack step. I'll cast Forbidden Alchemy. Sure. These are not the best of spells, but we'll take this one. Sure. Pitch three lands. <laughs> go to damage. Uh, attack for three. Sure. Okay. Take um, three. You're at four? I'm at seven. Is that including the three you just took? I haven't taken three. I blocked with... Oh, I'm at four this now. This is the second attack step. Yes. I will take it. Go to four. Okay, so we're going to go to our second man. We're going to attempt to cast... Garuk Primal Hunter. Resolves. Okay. He will go to four and make a beast. So at this point, we're in a lot of trouble. We've kind of run out of answers, which is a big issue for the es Esper list. I feel like we'd be in way better shape if we had been more patient with this answer and tried to go for a kill spell or a tuck spell off of our think twice instead of a counter spell. Is that it? Yes. All right. I will pass to you. And verdict. Uh, sure. And we'll pass. Uh, what life are you at? I'm at four. Okay. Uh, make a beast. Sure. Is your Garrick for all? Uh, he is. That's pretty cool. Um, this beast is going... So Garrick is quickly taking sure. over our game, which is kind of a problem for us, but that's the way it happens sometimes. Um, we're going to give our beast Vigilance and Haste. And Slight your Stronghold gives haste? Yes. Why wow. Okay. Target him. Sure. Swing for five. We're dead. Sure. All right. So... Uh, my hand, not that it matters, Yeah. was a Sigarda and a Snobby Grounds. I had the Sigarda in my opening hand. Uh, I was stuck on the four lands for a while. Which is why I kept killing your Arbor it Elf. It was another out that I had. Um... And once I got the go-ahead to resolve my spell, I also had the group for a while. Once I had the go-ahead to resolve my Dreadbore, um, when you didn't counter my Umbrella Rites, then I knew it was time to start dreaming uh, important threats out. So. I mean, I think that you played that very well. Like, once I ran out of Esther answers, you uh, you punished me for it. Okay. And that's kind of how you beat control with a mid-range deck. Um, so what I like to do in these videos is talk about my sideboard. And then have you talk about your sideboard. Sure. So against your deck, I feel like I want Obsidat. I feel like I want Mini Jace. I uh, I don't feel like your Umbero right strategy is nearly enough that I need to be afraid of it. So I'm not even worrying about that. I like Pything Needle to deal with your uh, Planeswalkers. Feelings of Dread is okay. And you're not aggro enough that Aetherize is great. You don't have enough instance that the spell is scary. Restoration Angel is a solid blocker and it's like a maybe sideboarded in card. But I feel like those are the things that I want. And now I need to kind of go through and think of the things that are bad. I didn't see any caverns, so I feel like my counter magic is pretty good. Tragic Slip is alright. Uh, I don't like Liliana of the Veil vale in this matchup. I do like Soren still. I don't like Dimir Charm. I'm not sure how I feel about Victim of Night. I think it's kind of alright. I feel like Ultimate Price is pretty bad given the amount of like multicolored threats that I saw. I definitely still want my one of Jace. I think I want to keep Victim of Night. I don't think I want the Feelings of Dread, and I don't think I want the Restoration Angel. So I think that I want to peel out an Ultimate Price, a Demir Charm, and a Lily, which are like early interaction kill spells for aggro decks more than anything else. And I want to put in Little Jace, because he's usually pretty good advantage. And he has the ability to rip a card out of your library if he ultimates. I like Obzadak, because he has the ability to win the game. And Pything Needle is a catch-all answer for your Planeswalkers, of which I've only seen one, but you're in a color that runs a lot of them. So that's my sideboarding strategy, is peel these three, uh, peel the Lily, the Demir Charm, and the Ultimate Price, and put in these three. And now we can kind of figure out what you feel like you're doing. And if you would explain to me why you're doing what you're doing, I think it would be great for the video. Well, I'm still working on it a little bit. We're almost done, uh, I believe.
Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, tied it out, and I'm missing a couple sleeves for some reason. It's not a huge deal. Uh, but these are what I brought out of my main board. Uh, Sever the Bloodline just doesn't really do anything. He's not running a ton of creatures, uh, even if he is. He's not really running any that we really need to kill. Uh, for that same reason, out comes Mizium Mortars, uh, two Abrupt Decays, and one Tragic Slip. Uh, also, uh, and really this is because I want an additional slot and I didn't know what else to take out, I took out a Centaur Healer. Uh, it's a one of in the deck and it really doesn't do anything against his deck. Uh, Luxon Smiter is larger, he's also uncounterable, and our life total is largely irrelevant. So, we don't really care about him as much, taking him out uh, weakens our curve a little bit, but it's not as big a deal because our, it's our large guys that we're really more worried about. So really what comes out is removal. Um, then what goes in is uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, this deck was actually made primarily to deal with a control-heavy match um, environment, and that just didn't really happen, but it turns out that every once in a while you'll find a, a, another uh, control player. Uh, and it's also turned out to be reasonably uh, good against mid-range. So against mid-range decks and control decks, I bring in uh, a little bit of a Planeswalker package. I have one Soren and one Vraska. Vraska normally doesn't do anything. Her plus one is really bad, but her minus three... Uh, kills any Planeswalker that we're worried out about. It also kills random problem permanents like Oblivion Ring, uh, Detention Sphere, uh, Pithing Needle if it shows up. Uh, it's it's a really hard card for Control to deal with because it just destroys things that Control wants to resolve against you. Uh, also coming in are two Slaughter games. We're really only worried about his Sphinx's Revelations. Um, our second one, we don't really know what we want to deal with, but uh, that's something that we kind of figure out after we hit a Sphinx's first, because uh, those are a big problem. We might hit uh, Supreme Verdict or Terminus, depending, um, but Sphinx's is usually the correct choice. Then we have uh, a little bit of some interesting stuff. We have an additional Dreadbore, uh, which just hits Planeswalkers, because again, uh, permanents that we are worried about are basically Jace uh, milling us for a lot. And we do have the the uh, Umbrella Rights plan a little bit going on, but we don't want to commit super heavily to it. And then lastly, we have a one of Boros Charm. Uh, sometimes it basically counters a Supreme Verdict. Uh, sometimes it pushes you over the top with Double Strike or just gives you cool blocks. And then sometimes it just finishes out a game for doing four mana. Uh, as you saw last time, I had him down to four. Um, so it could have closed the, the game out there if he found a lot of spot removal. Um, so it just has a little bit of utility. It's it's kind of a weak card in the sideboard, but it has some play here. So that's what um, I think that since this is the card that you're putting in for your Centaur Healer, I think that it's way better and a lot scarier than Centaur Healer. It has the ability to kill a Jace that I don't click up, which is terrifying. I think that more Jace removal is sweet. I think that Slaughter games are excellent against control, particularly because they can't be countered, and they remove my ability to refill my hand with Sphinx's Revelation. I don't like the idea of my opponent also having a Sorin, and even though I didn't show you a Sorin in the main board, I am running one, and I don't like you having the answer to Sorin of Sorin, and most importantly, it's hard for my deck to deal with. And Vraska, despite being a very inexpensive card right now, is a real problem for control because you can start picking away at my Planeswalkers, and while her plus one doesn't do anything against me, it gets her very close to her ultimate, which basically cost me a Supreme Verdict, and if I don't have the Supreme Verdict, kills me, because it's very unlikely that I have enough kill spells for all of the little assassin tokens. So we will go to game two. I will obviously be on the play, as I've already denoted, and this might be over quickly, because it seems like your deck is geared reasonably well to beat control, like you said, and I'm playing a very dedicated, very purist control deck, which the primary win condition is milling you to death. Right. Um, some of the weird cards that are in the main board are things like Slayer Stronghold, which is a card that people largely ignore. It's one of those utility lands that just hasn't seen a ton of play. Um, but the really cool thing about it is it gives haste. So basically, uh, all my utility lands, even though my creatures are technically weaker than something, say, like Junk Rites, um, the utility lands are what really pushes it over to the top. Um, Fall of the Archangel, not so much against this deck, but uh, particularly Wolf Run and uh, uh, Slayer Stronghold both make every single card that I resolve a real problem, uh, especially against a control deck. Uh, so it forces him to always have answers, um, and hopefully he runs out of answers before he starts drawing in and stabilizing. So 
that's what that is. So this hand is a little bit slow, but it's not the end of the world because we know that we're playing against kind of a mid-rangey deck, so I'm not worried about just getting blown out by an aggro deck. And it's got a lot of ways to dig out of that, which I'm fine with. Um, both of these spells are great, and this is sweet. So I think that we're going to keep, and we're going to lead with a Drown Catacomb okay. and pass. Our, our hand is a little loose, but it also is reasonable. Um, it has a direction for it to go, so we don't mind keeping it. Uh, draw for turn, um, and that makes it a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and take two, go to 18, uh, and we're going to cast our turn one play, Arbor Elf. Sure. I go? Yes. All right, so we're still not getting where we want to be exactly, but the reason that we played this, I guess either one would have done it, but I was thinking particularly this is because we wanted the ability to slip a turn sure. one mana dork, and then we're going to play a Glacial Fortress tapped and pass. Okay, so that was a little annoying, um, but our draw more than makes up for it, so that's fine. Um, we weren't super committed to Arbor Elf anyway, so we don't mind that it died. Uh, less removal for break guys. Uh, we're going to far seek. Sure. Uh, and out of our far seek, I think we probably want this blood crypt. Sure. Um, so that's what we're going to get. Michael? Yes. All right, so... We have the ability to main phase this and try and hit a shock land so that this comes into play untapped, or play it and hold up some sort of interesting trick. And I feel like our best bet, since it doesn't necessarily matter if we play the shock land this turn or next turn, with the exception of possibly taking two damages to hold up the trick. So we're going to lay an isolated chapel and pass. Sure. Um... I'll cut. Okay, um, so that was a bit of an interesting draw, um, so we're going to go with this plan. We're going to play a Kessig. We don't like seeing the Kessig. And we're going to go ahead and cast a Hunt Master. So as much as I'd like to have been like super clever and played this tap so that I had the Syncopate for one to just nail this, um, while I was representing the Syncopate for one, I do not have it, so your Hunt Master will resolve. Okay, so I will go back up to 20, and I will get a Wolf. And sure. After that, we'll pass to you. Think okay. once. Sure. Huntmaster is just a really good card against control. He really works well with Wolf Run, and he forces him to play less than ideally. Uh, although he might be main phasing Think Twice's at this point anyway, since he's only played Tap Lands. We uh, we're definitely going to main phase the Think Twice just sure. because we need to draw into a fourth land. And we did, which is sweet. And we'll pass. Okay. Well, he only has one land up, uh, which means that this top deck is quite frankly amazing. Um, it's probably the best tap, uh, top deck we could have hoped for. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to our tech step. Sure. Swing for four. I'm going to go to 16. Um, as much as we'd love for Huntmaster to flip, uh, it's just much more important to play this guy now because it's really hard for him to deal with. So we're going to play a Garouk. Sure. Uh, we're going to plus one him and get a beast, and we're going to pass. So the Garrick is scary, but luckily we have the sideboard tech for him, which is nice. The real issue is that we want to draw a land so that we can do this and this, which handles his entire board in one fell swoop and really digs us back into it. So we're going to take our turn and hope we draw a land, and sometimes you just get lucky. So... We're going to start our turn by verdicting. Sure. Then we're going to play Pything Needle, naming Garrick Primal Hunter. Sure. All right, so that's a little annoying, but we have ways and to And we'll deal pass. With, um, if we draw them. We really don't want... The worst thing Pat could do right now is draw Vraska and play a Vraska, because the Vraska could be blow up our Pything Needle. we didn't draw it, but because he's tapped out, that means that our Fragtos comes into play... Uh, uncontested, and he also scales very well with our Kessig Wolf run, so we don't mind. Uh, You're at 25. So, I think that our best play right now is to play this first to decide what we want to do with this. So we'll start with an Augur Bolas. Sure. Look at our top three. Revealing, I feel like 
this is our best card right now to take so we're going to reveal a think twice these are both great value spells and this one even has the ability to draw more but this one has the ability to interact this turn which is exactly what we want to do so we're going to pitch these two to the bottom sure. take our think twice and lay a godless shrine tapped and then we will pass the turn okay. So that's not particularly amazing, but it does give us some options this turn, so that's cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to our tech step. Sure. Uh, we're going to swing for five. I ain't going to block. Okay, so we want to... We want to get through for some damage, but we also want to play some of the cards that are in our hand. So we're going to activate Kessig Wolf Run, but we're only going to activate it... Um, for zero to give it for trample. For zero to give it trample. Um, I'm fine by that. Sure. So take two? Yes. I'm at 14. Um, then we're also going to take two and go to 23. Sure. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and play an Arbor Elf. Yeah, that's fine. Because um, there's no reason not to. Sure. Um, it just forces him to have to deal with another thing, uh, especially with Wolf Run on the field. Uh, and we're going to pass to you. I'm going to think twice. Sure. Right, so and we knew we had, he had that, and we we knew that was happening. We're actually think twice like this in the hopes that we hit either a Tragic Slip or a Terminus. We did not. And we'll draw for our turn. So this guy is really good in this matchup, and he's definitely what we're going to slam here. Sure. So I'm going to play a Jace, Architect of Thought. That's fine. And... Jace... Actually, not the best card, because you have two attackers, which is a real problem. Yes. And the Arbor Elf will do nothing without a Wolf Run, but he can also be extra mana if he really wants to be. So, so Jace might be a draw spell now that I'm actually thinking about it. If we had the Tragic Slip, he'd be much better. But since we don't, that's a little sad. Well, so we will... Uh, I mean, he's going to start off at four. I know he resolves. My question is whether or not I'm going to drop him to two click him to five and it really kind of depends on what you do since i feel like with all your planeswalker removal there's a potential for him to die i'm going to go ahead and minus him so you get to choose which two lands i get okay so we're basically just going to tell him he can have these or these uh it's pretty straightforward and we're basically not going to let him choose colors um i mean the control player is almost always going to take so two he's going to take more lands um they are thankfully shock lands which means he, they're almost always going to come into play tapped but that's pretty irrelevant he has enough mana at this point i'm reasonably sure that i've played a land this turn yes so i'm going to pass okay um so we're going to untap um that's also an okay land um we have to be a little bit careful about doing this but uh we more just want to force through damage uh, so we're going to play an Overgun Tomb untapped. Sure. You're at 21. Um, then we're going to go and declare our attack phase. Sure. Um, we're going to swing Drag Tusk at you and the Arbor Elf at Jace. I have no responses. All right. I would like to go to damage. We are going to... What are you at? 14? Yes. Okay, so we basically just want to say... All right, so we have an option to go all in here. Um, I think what we do is pump Thrag Tusk to seven. Uh, do you have any responses? These are lands you're tapping. Uh, yes, that is how I'm tapping. Okay, since what he's done is not left up Dread Boar mana, I think that I'm... Fine taking the 7, but I definitely want to get more value off of my Jace by factor fictioning again, so I'm going to Azorius Charm your Arbor Elf. Okay, that was the best possible thing that we could see, because it means that we have an additional ability to respawn, so we're going to Boris Charm and give him Double Strike. And we lose. Sometimes it happens. Yep. Um, I also had the Drake. Obviously, I would not have been expecting a Boros Charm. I know that he sideboarded it into his deck, but in a real match, you wouldn't know that, and you can't play around things that you don't know are there. No, it was very difficult, and the reason we didn't go all-in again on him is because we 
knew there was a chance that he just had the Azorius charm. Um, so we were fine with putting him on a two-turn clock, and the fact that he responded to our Arbor Elf just meant that we magically got that extra damage in. Right. Um, um, and, and went and won. So. so I think that your deck is sweet. I think that it's really good against control. The fact that it can come back from multiple board sweeps and Python Needle and all sorts of other answers is really cool. And I think that the biggest thing that your deck does against control is it plays an uncounterable kind of spell that does a lot of work against me. And I think that that is your utility lands. Each one of them does something very powerful and annoying. Uh, Wolf Run maximizes the damage of anything that I let resolve. Slayer Stronghold gives haste, which is a real pain and also pumps for damage and then anytime I resolve a blocker or plan on something living like even an Obsidat which I never got the chance to play but the death touch lifelink ability of Vault of the Archangel is something that I think is drastically underrated in the current meta um, and your deck is able to play and activate all four of those consistently off of your Farseeks and I think that that's a really sweet thing that your deck does and I think that it's a really interesting match uh, is there anything that you think is particularly neat about the match? All right, so we obviously didn't see a couple of different cards. Um, one of the cool things, and the reason I, I really like this deck, is obviously we've gone through the um, the three utility lands, which I think really uh, kind of push it over the top. Uh, I have a very diverse win con, uh, so I have a bunch of different ways to win, um, most of which we didn't end up seeing. We saw Aurelia, and we also saw the utility lands. Uh, you might have seen the Assemble the Legion, which got milled in the first game, um, but it did not show up. Uh, Assemble the Legion is just a really cool card that's a little bit underrated right now. Um, it's, it's I would really, agree. If it resolves, it's really difficult for if it resolves for control to deal with. I have to race it with a Jace and multiple Drown Yards, or I uh, just die because my deck does not run any sort of Oblivion Ring or Detention Sphere. And aside from those answers, like it's just going to devastate me. Yes. Um, he does have the, the small chase out of the sideboard, which I wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, but other than that, and Curse of Deathhold, which is another card that is hugely underrated, but just doesn't show up as much. Uh, other than that, he doesn't really have any way to deal with it. Um, another card that we didn't see at all was a Restoration Angel. There's only one in the stack that it should probably be a two or three of, but it's just another card that helps the force through damage. Uh, comes down uh, when he least expects it or when he taps out. Uh, it's another card that punishes him for tapping out, basically. Uh, another card that just didn't show up, which I actually really like this card, uh, there's one of Armada Worm. Uh, you like this card, and I disagree with it most of the time. It's, it's, it forces through a lot of damage for its mana. It's a six mana card. It represents, represents 10, damage 10 damage with Trample, um, which is... It scales really poorly with most of, our, with, with most of my utility lands. Um, but it works particularly well with Vault, not only because it provides a 20-point life swing, but also because with Death Touch, I can always trample over for. Oh, I mean Death damage. Touch and Life Link, or Death Touch um, and Trample are lethal. Also like it scales amazingly with Restoration Angel and Unburial Rites, and the fact that I'm running both, um, and you wouldn't necessarily know it, but the fact that I'm running both makes it hard to to figure out which of if you have one removal spell which worm you kill because depending on what I have in my hand you've either made things harder on yourself or you've made things easier on yourself like you might want to kill Armada Worm the the card to, to because then I can't blink it with the Restoration Angel but then in Burial Rites is a lot better but if you kill the token then the Restoration Angel can make another one make another one and add so three power with they, flying to the board they both uh, they both scale really well with our Mata Worm, and they scale it in different ways. It's a one of. It sometimes comes out. It's, it's uh, it's a, a unique win condition. So I think um, that both of these one ofs are interesting. I think that they're both particularly decent against control, and our Mata Worm is definitely good against the aggro heavy format. Whereas Assemble Legion, I think, is is kind of useless against an aggro deck. But all in all. I'm a fan of your deck. I think that these matches were, were pretty sweet, reasonably intuitive, and I want to thank everybody who watched for watching. I want to welcome you to make comments in the description box below. Let me know what you thought of this match, what you'd like to see next. I think that the next plan is to make a deck tech on my Esper deck because I think that Esper is a really sweet deck. It's one of my favorite things to play, 
and I like control decks in general, so I'll probably be making another control deck after this, but I want to kind of archive my Esper deck in a deck tech before I take it apart and turn it into something else. I'm leaning towards America right now, but I'm not entirely opposed to the idea of Bant control. So, uh, thanks for watching.